just moved back here from like in the rural area oh yeah oh, okay. well pretty rural, rural it was south central so right outside of Harrisburg uh -huh. which is a uh, capital so kind of in the in the yeah we're in the valley so right in the appalachians but I'm pretty pretty desolate I, I enjoyed it oh, yeah, yeah it was fun. <laughs> So you said your name's Eddie. Eddie. Okay. So this is Eddie. Um, heard my question, but uh, yeah, I let you hear your answer. So what do you think happens after this life? I'm um, actually uh, pretty open. I don't really have like a set way of thinking about it. I think that once it happens, um, we'll see. I've been pretty was free spirited, open minded my entire life. Mm -hmm. um, I never really had religion. Kind of, I think as children. A lot of kids have religion being pushed on them by their parents, mm -hmm. saying like, this is the way you have to think about things, you're going to church and that's it, no excuses. Yeah. Um, my mom didn't do that, so I was grown, raised by a single mom. Um, my, dad was, my dad's obviously was in the picture, and they just, they broke up when I was very young, so my mom primarily raised me. Not but bad. she raised me to be just very much free thinking. Um, yeah. Worked out well for her, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a good thing. Um, but just always open, I'm very open. I would say more spiritual than anything. Um, uh -huh. I don't know. I don't know what happens. Yeah. Um, I hope something good. We'll see. <laughs> well, I hope so too. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm just curious. Uh, so you said you grew up in. Did you grow up in Hammond? Is yeah. So I was born in Hammond. Because I'm thinking of the first Baptist church in Hammond. Mm -hmm. You know, like did that have an any kind of an impact? Did you have any involvement with that? Or? No, so I would say um, I was born in Hammond, I think around eight or nine years old. Um, my mom was just so focused on work. Okay. So I think like religion was kind of set on the back burner a little bit. Um, just a lot of things. We didn't live in the good part of Hammond too. So yeah. a lot of things happened. Um, my mom worked for the newspaper. So she was very much into like the distribution of the newspaper. She was a circulation manager. Okay. She was the one that would call you and ask you, do you want your newspaper delivered? She was yeah. in charge of that team. Um, got a better job offer in Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Got us away from you know the violence, the games, all that thing. She didn't want me growing up in that. And we moved to Pennsylvania, and then um, you know, I, so I'm, my background's Mexican, Spanish, um, so Catholic. So okay. we moved to Pennsylvania. Um, more focused on it, I would say, right around like seventh, eighth maybe a little bit of beginning of high school, and my mom was like, come to church, come to church. Um, was that because she was going? Yes, yeah, okay. so my mom was going. Come um, with me to church. Exactly, yeah. mm -hmm. so it's, you know, it's my mom, I'm not gonna tell her no. Right. I would say like a couple months into it, though, I was like, I'm not feeling this That's at all. Like, exactly, yeah. yeah, I think I was kind of rebelling a little bit, wasn't open to it at all, and just kind of said, no, I'm done, I'm not going. And she yeah. said, okay, yeah. and she was okay with that. Honestly, never returned back. Um, what, what do you think was uh, the turnoff, I guess? Um, for me, honestly, it was, I'd say a bit of, I can say this now, obviously, many years later, um, a little bit of embarrassment because I wasn't one that, I was like a skater kid. I never uh -huh. dressed up. Oh, okay. My mom was always like, you have to wear your suit and tie and go. I was oh. like, ah, I don't want the, a very small community. Yeah. Didn't want people like my neighbors or anything like, ah, they don't want to see me dressed up. I don't want to do that. And then I have to sit there and listen to something I don't care about. Why would I do that on a Sunday? You know, I want to sleep in because yeah. we always go to the first mass. So that was really it. It wasn't. It wasn't so much the religion, it was the, uh, the dressing the up. The formality, I guess. Correct, yeah. And I was, I was never one, I'm always against the grain. I never wanted to dress up like, yeah. if I go to a job interview, I don't wear a suit. I wear like a sweater and a nice shirt, but I don't wear a suit. I don't yeah. like going conforming to So stuff. if you were the president of uh, Ukraine, you'd talk to Congress in a, in yes. a sweatshirt. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I think for me it was more of that. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, I just never revisited it. I think it's just I've always been on the go. Yeah. So like from high school and college and then the work and it's just like never found time for that. Yeah. You know it's interesting, so I get in a lot of these conversations mm -hmm. and um, I think years ago people would have said pretty often, I don't like dressing up, that's why I don't like going to church. Yeah. And I just never hear that. Yeah. And I don't think people do dress up much. You know? Yeah, it's exactly. Like, except maybe in like a small town. Exactly. And where where it's kind of like status yeah, quo, cool. mm -hmm. you're, you're there to be seen. Exactly, yeah. It's like the, you know, it's the, it's the mall. It's the place where everybody goes because in a big city, everywhere you a lot of people. Yeah. In a small community, it's like church is the place where everybody's yeah. going to see you for that week. And I, and I think, so, like I studied the history of the church mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, for the first several hundred years, it was like an underground church and people were being persecuted. And, 
meeting at night, and meeting down in the catacombs in Rome. Uh, Rome, yeah, and uh, and then when Constantine said this is going to be at least one of our official religions, and he he proclaimed himself, you know, a Christian, it was like when you go to church, you you go to be seen, mm -hmm. you know. It became, I guess, the cool thing to do, and I think that was I think that was a bad. Like that began, that began a lot of people going to church, like you say, for status mm -hmm. or to rub shoulders with the right people or, you know, to be seen there. Yeah, you dress yeah. up, you wear your best clothes. And and that's like interesting. That. You said that um, in Rome. Uh -huh. So actually, I didn't know that, but I went to the catacombs in Rome, but never knew that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, five years ago, I went to Rome and I went oh. to the catacombs in tour. I would have never known that though. Yeah. Well, that's what, so that's, that's where Christians were meeting and, or just like in secret. You know, wow. for, okay. for a long time. Nice. But then it be so. Then um, once it became an official religion, then they could have public buildings, and then, and then it, you know, it, or they were meeting in people's houses. They were house churches, and uh, and so then it became like I say. Uh, well, I, I meet at this church. Like like the, even the building itself had to look better than the next mm. person. And so go. then then you have even getting into the Middle Ages, and you've got all those. Um, cathedrals and you know like in Europe and every town has to have a better cathedral than the, than the next one it's yep. a status symbol yeah exactly and and uh, as a matter of fact one of the probably so I, I became a Christian when I was 17 and so then you know like graduated from high school and I went to college took a philosophy course and one of the um, probably the most impactful uh, books that I've ever read outside the Bible was a book called, it's called The Theory of the Leisure Class. Okay. And have you ever heard of it? No. No, no I was thinking so, like that. So there's a, a sociologist named uh, Thorsten Babelin who wrote it. And anyway, he came up with the term conspicuous consumption. I don't know if you ever heard that term before. Okay. So conspicuous means making it well known that you are a consumer or that you buy expensive things or and then he just chapter after chapter he goes through all the different ways that we kind of validate ourselves by mm -hmm. what we wear or you know just throughout history different ways in which people have you know made their importance self-importance I guess known by different status symbols you know and then so he's got a chapter on church you know and made me start to look at church a different way like yeah why do the churches have to spend so much money on mm -hmm. this or that you know and yeah and it, it's interesting so, you say that too because i've been traveling quite some time but i feel like every big city i go to you go let's check out the church so yeah. I, just went, I just went to mexico city um for christmas with my fiance and i walked we walked into the i can't i don't know exactly what it was called i cannot remember for life from there enough. Um, but it's this huge area where it's obviously sacred. You go in there and you see the church, and I'm like, oh, like, why is it this big? And there's like yeah. 20 people in here. <laughs> yeah. But it's 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 more of a status thing. But that I wouldn't say it's necessarily a bad thing. It's just kind of like more yeah. the over the years. Yeah, it can be because like these cathedrals were built to draw people's gaze up to God. You know, yeah, to exactly. to to have a like you say a sacred space, and so. And then, and then the light shining in, you know, is, is used in so many different yeah. ways. And, and I think even like art was designed not to draw attention to the artist himself, but to the object that he's depicting or whatever. And um, so I think that's good. And I think a lot of people, you know, like obviously uh, churches were hiring artists and architects and builders and everything. Uh, I mean, I, I can't say everybody was there to glorify God, but, you know, I mean, that's a very valid way to spend your career, is yeah. building something beautiful like that. Yeah, absolutely. So, and you know, so, it's timeless at that point, because it's, yeah. it's not going anywhere. And I don't know if you ever heard of, um, in Barcelona, Spain, there's a uh, Gaudi, uh, there's, a, there's a cathedral that's being built, and I think it's probably on its, I want to say, 400th year of construction. It's like not done yet, and it's just phenomenal. And it's just an ongoing project, you know. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, these are, are beautiful. So, so I guess I 
I take away from it that you know people have mixed motives. Yes. In, in almost everything we do, we can't get away from. Okay, maybe we are trying to honor God, but we're also looking around and seeing who else is looking. You know. <laughs> I think I think some people are just less open to speaking about it. Mm-hmm. Like I am, uh, my my fiance to like a fault. Always, um, she's like, you're so blunt, and I'm like, yeah. It's, I pride myself on being honest and very blunt. Like, I can sit here and tell you that when I was a kid, I didn't want to go to church because I didn't want to dress up in front of my friends. Yeah. I didn't want to be seen. Other people probably feel the same way, but won't tell you that reason. So it's more not wanting to uh, stand out or be, be unusual? Correct, right? yeah. So, so in a way, you were kind of concerned what your friends thought of you, obviously. Exactly. Yes, exactly. So, kind of going back to the status thing. Yeah. And the, the interesting thing So if you were a rich businessman, yeah, you want to walk around with a exactly. vested suit and tie. <laughs> exactly, yeah, and I'm probably more comfortable wearing that. Um, yeah. it's, it's funny because it's kind of full circle now. Um, so kind of grew up with that. Um, and currently, um, so we're planning our wedding. That's what mm-hmm. I'm kind of doing is getting our guest list together and all that stuff. And in September, we're getting married. Um, so my, my soon-to-be wife, her family is very devout Catholic. Mm-hmm. Her parents, primarily. In um, Mexico or? No, they're, so oh, okay. they, they live in Chicago. They mm-hmm. go back and forth like, yeah. every couple months. Um, but every Sunday, it's go to church, every Sunday. So I would say probably within the last eight months, they've been recruiting me to go, yeah. and uh, I've gone. And I've well, um, not, do you have to go for counseling for the So yes. With the past um, the priest? Yeah, yeah. so yeah. The, other, the other part of that too is I don't have my sacraments. Yeah. So when I was, um, this is going way back, when I was born, I had a condition with my lungs, so I couldn't get them because I, my mom didn't know if I was going to make it oh, wow. in the hospital when I was born. So um, my mom had kind of like an impromptu sacrament done with the priest in the hospital, um, but it was never like certified. Are you talking about a baptism? Yes, baptism oh, okay. and confirmation. Oh. So I don't have that officially like documented. Yeah. So I, I need that for a wedding. Oh. Okay. So I'm actually going through the classes hopefully in April. Yeah. So it's, it's funny because my mom's like, I knew when you were young, you never wanted to go. And now look at you, like you're going to go do all this stuff for your Well, you're wife. motivated now. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. I was like, well, it's, you know, it's for my fiance, it's for my wife. I know she cares yeah. about this. And it's not that I don't care about it. It's just I was never really reintroduced. Yeah. And now that I'm older and more mature and I can kind of yeah. think more freely and understand everything behind it, I can sit back and like, okay, I can do this. So have you started the classes? April, I think, oh, okay. I hope. Um, so I am a Spanish background. I'm not the best at Spanish. Uh-huh. Where I grew up in Pennsylvania, which I count living in Pennsylvania like the important years of my life. Yeah. Um, there wasn't much Spanish speaking, so my mom yeah. never taught me. Well, Spanish so, would be your uh, heart language. Correct, yeah. yeah. So like my uh, her, my, my fiance and her parents, like their first English is, is Spanish. Okay. So she's still kind of hounding me a little bit, not in a bad way, but I do want to learn it. Yeah. Um, so I'm slowly digging into it more. So the classes are going on now, but they're Spanish only. Oh. So I don't feel comfortable taking them yet. Um, so I'm telling them, I tell the church that we are getting married at, um, when you have English or you can do anything else for me, let me know. Oh, okay. So that's kind of so the they're going to do the the, the cate- is it what the catechism mm-hmm. lessons then? Yep, exactly. Yeah. So I'll do that, get it all done. Hopefully by summertime, mm-hmm. ready for the wedding, and then we'll be good yeah. in September. Okay. Well, um, do you, do you have a basic belief like, uh, for example, in God that God exists? Or what um, What do you think about that? I would say yes, I do. Um, and the reason for that is I think that. Everybody needs to kind of have faith in something, mm-hmm. um, whether that be God, spirits, spiritual, whatever it may be. Um, my personal belief is yes, there is God, um, mm-hmm. because it, sometimes life is too too weird to like not think that something's going on. Yeah. Um, at least in my opinion, I'm yeah. very big on like, well, this happened when I was 16, and now it's happening when I'm 30. Is it connected? I don't know. So like, yeah. I think that that it's it's a way to like. Put those pieces together without driving yourself a little crazy. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's where I go to with it. And as I go, it's it's interesting to read about it and learn about it, especially being in in you know church on Sundays now and going with my yeah. my fiance and then having her tell me things like getting ready for these classes. Um, it makes sense. To me. I, I do believe it, um, but I'm also open to the idea that. If God doesn't exist, what else could be out there? Who yeah. knows? Who knows? Yeah. But I'm definitely open to it. I love to see um, both sides of it, both sides of any argument. So I have a journalism background. Oh, so okay. my mom worked in the newspaper. Yeah. I grew up in the newsroom, like being on there with everybody. So I went to okay. college for journalism. Yeah. So I'm very big on like, 
I like to be fair and consistent, so I'm not kind of going back to politics. I'm not yeah. Republican or Democrat. I'm right in the middle. Yeah. I want to yeah. see both sides. I yeah. want to see both sides of the argument and see what's on there. Well, I've come to the conclusion, politics, and I try not to get into them, but mm -hmm. um, the only way we'll see both sides is to actually, like, listen to the news analysis mm -hmm. from both sides. Exactly. You, know? yeah. you got to see... And, yeah. you know, one says it's half empty, one says it's half full. I don't necessarily think they're both... Either of them are lying. They both could be telling the truth. It's just what perspective are you yeah. looking at? Exactly. You know? And, and I just got... I had a conversation about a week ago with my fiance. I believe... We have conversations many times where mm -hmm. we talk about, um, you know, why do they think like this? That's the wrong way. Well, you, what's their reality? What reality are they living in? Yeah. I don't know. So people that have other viewpoints, maybe they grew up a certain way. Maybe yeah. they saw something in their life that made them change their mind. I'm open to hearing about it. It doesn't mean I agree with you. But I, I kind of think the basic difference, and this also gets back to my questions about religion, is, um, well, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about human nature? Basically good or basically bad? I think, I think, <laughs> I think basically good. I think basically good um, that everybody's got a motive. Everybody's got an agenda, you know. We're very, we, not an agenda in a bad way. I would say uh -huh. that we all have motives for doing things, but I think yeah. genuinely like people want to be loved. People want to be, I mean, did you re nobody wants to be secluded in a room their entire life. Um, yes, we love technology and some people do abuse that and get stuck on that and fixated on it, but at, at the end of the day, I think people are genuinely good. Because mm -hmm. if they weren't, you probably wouldn't have society. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so I come from the perspective that we're generally bad. Okay. And that, for example, if if a, in being a high school teacher, I see this, um, if kids are raised with no supervision, they end up, they, they need to be trained to be good. Kids, kids need home training, yeah. you know? Yeah. They need moral training, and they need um, a proper upbringing. So kind and, of like nature see, versus nurture a little bit? Uh, not, so, not so much, so, so in, to me it's a, so I'll just tell you like, for me, it's I, I interpret things through the Bible and through the lens of the Bible, which would say that we began like all people are basically well, we're made good. You know, when the Bible talks about Adam and Eve, are you familiar with the like the? So I don't want to just assume. So so we were made in God's image. So just the fact that we were made in God's image means that you know we should treat other image bearers, we're all in image bearers of God, with dignity and respect. So so I would never say, well, well people are basically bad, therefore treat them badly. No, it's, we're all image bearers of God. So, But at the same time, the Bible says, well, but then Adam knew right from wrong, don't eat from this tree, and you know, he was given a rule, he breaks it. From the very beginning, it says he um, at that point he knew right from wrong, and uh, he had already you know broken God's rule and was cast out. And ever since then, there's this ongoing story of how God restores our relationship, you know, with Himself, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> which means we start out, uh, you know, everyone has a like a, a moral conscience. So that's, that's where I think when you say people are basically good, we all know right from wrong and we all want to be seen as good people. So yep. I don't, I'm not, not denying that, right? That's a good point though, I never looked but at the, that. Way. But the problem is we know right from wrong, but we break it. Yeah. So, yeah. so are we basically good or bad? Well, we're bad. So knowing right from wrong is a far cry from actually doing right yeah, all the time. Yeah, that's true. And so so we choose the wrong path and, and that alienates us even further from God. And and so the Christian story is, well how can we be redeemed or made right with God and have that right relationship? Yeah. And um, so so I start with the idea that we're basically bad 
bad, but we know right from wrong. And as I talk with people, I find that everybody, even like atheists that don't believe in God, everyone wants to justify themselves as, well, I'm a good person without God, right? Yeah. So the big line I get from atheists is, well, I don't need the reward of heaven or the punishment of hell to be a good person. I'm just a good person like, because it's the right thing to do, you know? Yeah. But the, the, the common denominator I see in everybody is we all want to be able to say we're a good person. So like, so like both sides, politically even, want to be seen as good, you know? They just, their definition of what's good may or may not be based on the Bible or the Ten Commandments or, you know, um, diff- you know what's the moral code, yeah, you know? exactly. And so, um, so I, so, so to me it's important to say, it's kind of, it's kind of like, let's say God says, I'm just, I'm thinking of, you know, like, if I give someone a present, I need to give them what they want, not what I think they want. Or not what I say they should want, or not what I want to be able to use once they give it. Yeah, like yeah. my wife. So you know what I'm saying. So yeah. so it's like if we're going to be good, we have to base it on God's standard, not our own standard. And we need to be able to say, okay, God, even though I don't want to do this, I'm going to do it because you say it's good, or you, you know. And so so yeah. that's kind of the perspective, right? Yeah. You know. That makes a lot of sense. That's. Uh, and it kind of goes back to like the status thing, right? Because I want to be perceived as a good person, whether or not I'm atheist or I believe in this or that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. It's a different perspective. So, I never thought of. Yeah. So like now, even in the in the growing secularization of society, it's like okay, well, religion. More and more people are becoming non-religious, mm-hmm. right? But still, we have that that sense in ourselves, you know, we want meaning in life. Mm-hmm. What, what is meaning in life? Well, I, I left the world a better place than when I came here. Basically, they're saying I want to be seen as a good person, or I want, I want to do good while I'm here. Positive impact. And, and it's like, okay, who are, who's judging you, you know, that's going to be there when you leave this life, you know? And so, so then that's why, uh, you know, like the whole environmental movement is, you know, like people are, um, seeing that as kind of their way of showing how good they are and let me show on social media all the good things I do to, yeah. you know, yeah. to, I guess it's called Validate virtual sing- signaling, yeah, exactly. right? Yeah. So, so, yeah, we want to be seen as good in that area or be seen good in the social justice area or, you know, all the different, not, you know, it, it's kind of like there's a civil religion, civil... Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy that they have to yeah. Make, yeah and so the thing I see driving all that is that innate sense of a moral conscience mm-hmm. but um, are we gonna base so so it's like the Bible says we you know oh so so people that argue against a moral conscience will say well one person says this is right and one says that's right who you know that that shows we don't have one to me it's more like a moral conscience is the idea that there is a moral right and wrong we may not know exactly what it is because life does get complicated, mm-hmm. but there is an ultimate referee or an ultimate judge yeah. that we're accountable to. Yeah. So, like when I think about you know like uh, the decisions I make, am I making them according to my moral standard? Well, my moral standard, I wouldn't have to argue with it if it was mine because mm-hmm. it would be mine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Yeah. So I'm arguing with something, and I'm trying to justify my actions. What is it I'm arguing with? It's almost like a soccer player arguing with the ref. You know, yeah. the ref is yeah. saying, and the soccer player is saying, back and forth. "Why?" But I, but I, you know, you know, trying to give excuses why he he should be let off, you know, or whatever mm-hmm. from getting a penalty or whatever. So, yeah. so there is to me that. And that's actually called the moral argument for God, you know, like if there's laws or morals, there's a law giver or a moral giver, mm-hmm. you know, who, who made those. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, how do you think you would do according to what you know of that biblical sense of morality? Mm-hmm. It's not like you read the Bible all the time, but from what you know so far, what you've gathered, 
if the Bible says, you know, that God is our ultimate judge, there's a judgment day and our relationship with him going into eternity is based on that, reward or punishment, heaven or hell, how do you think you would do? Um, I would hope reward. Yeah. Um, I would think well. And I, I say that because I'm very calculated um, and I'm very, again, open to like many, every decision. Mm -hmm. I am super analytical with myself, um, almost in daily life, again, kind of like to a fault. Um, a lot of people say, like, why do you analyze every situation, everything you do and every decision you make? I, I'd like to make sure that I make, I take the best, make the best decision. Yeah. Um, to your point about like the gift, like I, I believe I'm very selfless in the sense that, I, I, yes, and um, kind of a quick backstory, funny thing, like when you said that, that triggered me a little bit, mm -hmm. not in a bad way. I remember when I was a kid, um, my sister's boyfriend at the time, um, we had like a bi-level. So I lived, my mom and I lived in the bottom level and my sister and her boyfriend lived on the top level mm -hmm. in a two flat house. And her boyfriend bought me a PlayStation for Christmas. And I remember to this day- I can like, see this coming. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, how did he buy me this? Yeah. I didn't know that, well at the time, you know, I'm a kid, I'm just happy that he had kids. Yeah. And oh. it was like a two four. I was thinking he would be the one to play. Exactly, yeah, but right. it was it was his kids who were my age. Like, oh I can if I buy this I make my girlfriend happy, but I also take care of my kids. Yeah. Now they're just gonna be like, playing. Yeah. And that's what it turned into. So I, I always remember that as I was Mixed growing up. Again. Exactly, yes, exactly. <laughs> so I, I always think of that like as I get older and grow up and get out of that, like I, I never wanna do that. I wanna make sure that like when I get somebody is for them and very selfless, and I, I do that with my fiance. I try to be very thoughtful on what I get her, and yeah. no, this is not for me. This is, I, I'm, I'm never gonna use it. This is for you, it's something you wanted. Yeah. So I would say I think I would do well. Yeah, so um, let me tell, let me give you a little good person test, mm -hmm. and we'll see how sure. you would do it. Sure. So you know the Bible says you shall not lie, mm -hmm. right? Have you ever told a lie? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be lying if you said you didn't. Correct, right? yeah. How many lies do you think you've told? Uh, more than I can count on all my fingers. Okay, yes. so God, okay, so the Bible depicts God as the creator and has all wisdom, all knowledge, with no effort at all. So it's not like God is like this calculating little mm -hmm. traffic cop who's yeah. got to keep track and work hard and work up a sweat to keep track of us. God can look at us and, and know everything about us. So he would know about all those lies. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? I don't want to depict God as like being like nitpicky, but yeah. it's like it's like if we were to look at a person and see all that truth with no effort, you know, we're not being nitpicky. We're just seeing what is. Yeah. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, what what would you be called standing before God on Judgment Day? What what would what would that make you? In that context, I would say obviously probably a punishment. It would be a punishment, yeah, based on the fact that you're a liar, yeah, right? Yeah. Now, I'm not saying I'm a habitual well, liar, course, but of course, yeah. so, and, and, and this whole thing is, you know, like, I, it won't take very long. Just no, ask you about a couple commandments. It's, 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 um, it's something to get us to judge ourselves, because the Bible actually says the law, or the Ten Commandments, is a, it's like a mirror. Mm -hmm. to, so, like, we need a standard. So, when we think, am I a good person? We're comparing ourselves to other people we know. Mm -hmm. Compared to them, I'm pretty one, one of the good guys, right? You know, or or not, you know? Yeah. Um, so, have you ever stolen anything? No. Okay. Ne never took credit for anything that wasn't that you did that belonged mm -hmm. to someone else. Not that I can remember. No, I honestly have not. Okay. Downloaded anything that didn't belong to you? I mean, if you count that, <laughs> sure, yes. <laughs> if you count that, then yes. 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 So. Um, you know, and, and even, so it's like the very first sin, eating an apple from a tree that is not, you're not allowed to, right? Okay, that doesn't seem like the sin that all mankind should stumble over and that should, you know, like doom us for eternity. But yet there was something about it that, you know, like we'd have to say, okay, well then if that, not that, then what, you know, mm -hmm. like, Basically, God said, don't do it, and they did it, right? So we have this moral conscience in us that says mm -hmm. we shouldn't take things that aren't ours or, you know, take shortcuts like that. 
So, who am I, who would I be to stand before God on Judgment Day and say, well, God, yeah, but everyone else was doing it, yeah, or, yeah. so, so we can't, so just technically speaking, I guess we're saying you'd be guilty of, yeah, of that. Of course, know, yeah. A liar and a thief, right? Yeah. Um, have you ever used God's name disrespectfully? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, and even to say, OMG, mm -hmm. it's like we're using the breath God gives us to say his name in a, just a flippant manner, yeah. a disrespectful manner. Yeah. And then, of course, people use much worse language, mm -hmm. you know. Have you ever, um, hopefully you've never killed anyone. No. Um, so Jesus, have you ever heard of the Sermon on the Mount? No. Um, so, you probably heard, like, quotes from it where it says, blessed are the poor, for theirs will be the kingdom of heaven. Blessed yes. are the... So he goes on and then he starts talking about the Ten Commandments and he starts um, he starts talking about the spirit of the law, not just the letter of the law. And so he was talking about murder. He said, you shall, you heard it said you shall not murder, but I say if you, um, if you have anger towards your brother and you call him a fool, you're in danger of the fire of hell. Like, that's serious, you know? And a lot of people think, well, God, in the Old Testament, he was mean because he gave us all these rules, right? And Jesus came along and he was nice. Well, Jesus actually, he didn't say, just don't murder anyone. He said, don't even call people a bad name. So he was actually more strict. Wow. You know? <laughs> so, you ever call anyone a bad name? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, in anger, maybe, maybe, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, just joking, too, but, you know. Yeah. So I think in anger, um, I have to. So... That would make us, you know, murderers at heart, really. Like, mm -hmm. we're hurting people with our words, people not, just, kind of, not yeah. just our hands, you know. Um, the, the Ten Commandments get into our, our attitudes. Have you ever uh, coveted, like, wanted something that's not yours? Yeah, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. so that's, that's a hard one. The one on um, adultery, you mm -hmm. shall not commit adultery, but don't even look with lust. So mm -hmm. now he's talking about our, our thoughts, right? And then the Bible says... If you fail to do the good you ought to do, that too is sin. So it's like, okay. have you had situations where you could have helped out, but you didn't? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Me all the time, every day, yeah. you know, living in the city. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, yeah. and I've got a lot of ways of justifying, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, yeah. like I, you know, I, I don't want to become a, an enabler. You know? I mean, but then how do I know what's a mm -hmm. true need and what's not? So, Life is complicated, and that's, yeah, you know, but have I passed by easy situations where I could very easily have helped someone? Yes, I have. You know? mm -hmm. so, yeah. so most people, and I don't know if, if you think this way, but if there is a judgment, what, with, you know, and God is the one who's judging, not comparing us to other people, but comparing us to the mirror, mm -hmm. the, the standard, his law, we hope that somehow our good will outweigh our bad. Mm -hmm. So I've done a lot of good things, you know, and so the problem with that is, um, I don't know if you're in any kind of finance area of work. A bit, yeah. Well, I, mean, I don't work in finance, but I'm interested in it. I mean, just the whole idea that, you know, like uh, your, your debits and your credits have to balance out. Yep. Well, well, we hope that our good will outweigh our bad. The problem is our good doesn't weigh anything mm -hmm. because we ought to do it anyway, mm -hmm. you know? Like if, if a little old lady fell here and you helped her up, I don't know you, but I'm pretty sure you would not say, well, look at me, what a great person I am. Yes. You would say, I just, you know, I, I could help her up and I did, and that's the right thing to do, you mm -hmm. know? So we don't get credit for the good things that we ought to do anyway, yeah. but the problem is, the bad things we ought not to do, and we do them. And so how are we going to pay for the bad things we've done with the good things we ought to do? Well, we can't because yeah. we ought to do them. So then we're stuck with the bad things. And that's where on a judgment day, we couldn't stand before God and say, I'm innocent. Yeah. Or my good outweighed my bad. No, it didn't. You know, I willingly, with full knowledge of good and evil, mm -hmm. chose to do the bad thing or to fail to do the good thing many times in my life, right? And so the bad news of the Bible is that that doesn't 
does, you know, cause us to deserve any kind of reward, it would be a punishment. It would be hell. It would it would be casting us out from God's presence and not living in a right relationship with our Creator. Kind of the same way Adam and Eve when they when they ate that apple, they they hid because they knew it was wrong. They didn't want to deal with God. You know, like. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's that we're cast out or if we just run from God, but when we sin, it makes us, it breaks down our relationship with God. We, we know we're exposed and we know He sees us and He sees everything about us. Mm-hmm. We want to hide, you know? Yeah. So it, it breaks our relationship with God. And so what, what the Bible is, is it's like this long story through a, a kind of like a, what's the word, a, a, like a prototype mm-hmm. people. The, the Jewish people, all through the Old Testament, you've got these people that God is working with and showing his character and showing what works and what doesn't work. And then, and then through it all, making predictions that there would be this coming Savior, this Messiah. And then Jesus comes out of that people. Um, and then, you know, he takes our punishment in our place. And so that's God saying, Yes, you do deserve to be punished. There has to be a punishment. You know, God loves us, but He loves justice as well. There must be a punishment for sin. Mm -hmm. But He takes our punishment for us in our place. And so to me, so the only way we can understand that, that's like good news. God did that for me. But the only way I could accept that was to say, because I deserve that punishment myself. Like it's like the good news only makes sense with that bad news. Yeah, understanding that bad news. Yeah. And so I had some people when I was in my late teens, you know, explain to me that, you know, what sin is. They did it in a nice way, but I realized, yeah, I'm a sinner and I yeah. don't deserve God's favor or anything. You know, I deserve to be punished. Which the world would reject as, you know, that's negative, that's you know yeah. especially um, in the current planet. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and no one wants to admit that. And so it's kind of like our human nature is to say, no, I, I think I'll go to heaven because I deserve to go. You know, and I, look at all the things yeah. I did. And Do you think that's the reason why people are now becoming more non-religious? Is because they don't want to accept um, the truth of what could be there? I think, I think uh, religion in general and Christianity has a lot of baggage that's built up over the years. So it's always been Satan's... So I, you know, I mean, I believe in Satan. I believe in you know, there's a deep, you, there's a spirit must, right? world out yeah. there. From the very beginning, he was a liar and a deceiver, and he constantly criticized things of God. So God said, "Don't eat from that tree," and Satan twisted around and said, "Did he really say you would die if you ate from that? No, you won't." You know, and so he he deceived them, and so people are people. Um, what I was saying, there's so much baggage with, you know, obviously, uh, like I was saying with uh, with Rome, um, a lot of people that began to go to those public churches weren't, even, weren't Christians, and a lot of things have been done in the name of Christ that um, Christ wouldn't have, you know, they weren't Christians. They, so they weren't at heart. They might have been like part of Christendom, you know, like, mm-hmm. but, but they were... Um, just and interested, maybe. Yeah, like Go. Constantine had them put uh, crosses on their shields. Well, does that make them Christian now? You know. Yeah. So, so I think there's a lot of room for criticism of religion and Christianity, and people are listening to that. And mm-hmm. and then, of course, science is becoming the new religion. Technology. Yeah. yeah. Man is starting to feel like we can we can do it all ourselves. We don't need God. So, I think there's a lot of a lot of reasons why. Yeah religion is becoming less you know important but human nature doesn't change and we all want to be able to somehow justify our existence and say that I'm a good person yeah absolutely we just we just want to reserve the right to choose the standard by which we say we're a good person yeah and that's you know I don't as a Christian I don't have the right to make that standard I have to say okay what does the Bible say it's like it's like um if the, if the Bible is a mirror, and I look in the mirror and I see myself, and I see all the warts all, all over my face, and you know, the dirt on, on me, and all the bad things, I have to say, okay, I guess that's true, you yeah. know. 
Yeah. We can't choose our own filter and say, I want to look in a mirror that doesn't show me those things. Exactly. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, people want to reserve the right to choose the mirror they look into. Maybe put but it at, that way. At some point, <laughs> though, you need to face the truth and say that's. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's a. It can be hard, and I think that's why people don't want to become Christians is because then they have to face the truth about themselves. Like, is my sin so bad that the God of the universe had to die in my place? That's that's pretty serious, mm -hmm. you know? And I don't want to say that, but I have to say it is mm -hmm. because I'm sinning against that same God who's holy and he made me. And, you know, something even like saying OMG, it's like, who gave me the breath that I have to even say that? Yeah. You know? Yeah. How, what am I going to use my my vocal cords and my body and my breath to to disrespect God? You know, that's pretty bad, you know? So, yeah. so um, yeah. It makes sense. So, I don't know, like you say that you're open to different perspectives, so that's a, I don't know if that's something perspective you've yeah, before. I, I haven't. No, it's it's interesting. I think um, definitely opened my eyes a little bit more to it, and it uh, made me a little bit more excited to go into my yeah, classes class. and my experience that I'm going through the next. What, now, are you so so as a Catholic? So I'm not Catholic. Mm -hmm. um, are you aware of you know? So I'm Protestant, right? So are I'm you aware not, of what what is Catholic? What is Protestant? Not exactly. No. So. Real quickly, and I don't know how much time you have. I actually have to get going myself. Yeah. But real quickly, you've heard of Martin Luther, mm -hmm. not Martin Luther King. Yes. Yeah. So the original Martin Luther. So he was a Catholic priest. This was at a time when the priests, you know, there was a priest in every little church in Europe, and they pretty much one Bible in that church. Like they didn't have the printing press yet. The Bible was written in Latin and Greek um, and Hebrew, I guess. No, no, Latin. It would have been in Latin there um, but uh, but the common people didn't read the Bible for themselves they had to depend on the priest to interpret it for them and to preach to them and so a lot of it it, it, it gave people weren't priests weren't held in the church wasn't held really accountable for its teachings and so a lot of church teachings and traditions sprung up over the hundreds of years mm -hmm. that weren't based on the Bible. And so Luther read it for himself, said, you know, and one of the biggest um, traditions was what's called indulgences, which number one, they taught that people would go not to hell, heaven or hell when they died, but to purgatory, mm -hmm. which isn't in the Bible. They try to justify it by twisting some passages, I feel. But, um, but then if your relatives are in this horrible place called purgatory, well then you better pay some what's called indulgences to get them out. Gotcha. And so it became a money making scheme ah, for the church okay. and that's how they funded St. Peter's uh, Cathedral in Rome. Um, so he protested against that and other church traditions and teachings. He had uh, 95 theses, I guess that would be statements that of protest. Mm -hmm. And so he nailed this list of 95 theses on the door in at the church, which was like a place of public debate, I guess, yeah. for everyone to see. So he made it known, and, and he was defrocked as a priest and, you know, persecuted and that sort of thing. So he became known as a pro Protestant, protester, right? Ah, okay. And so then uh, other, you know, like, so then he... Basic, and then he uh, interpreted the Bible into German, the common language, and this was about the same time as the just the uh, invention of the printing press, and so what you would appreciate being yeah. a newsman, yeah. um, which uh, so then they started printing the the first book that ever was ever printed was a Bible, and they started printing all sorts of pamphlets and teachings and. So people began to read the Bible for themselves, and so this tradition grew up of let's read the Bible. So, so to me, the biggest um, difference between Catholic and Protestant is Catholics would say our t church teachings um, and traditions. That's where you start, and then you read the Bible. 
and we would say, no, the Bible is the first authority and the traditions and church teachings, let me judge them according to what the Bible says. And so, because I can read it for myself. And uh, so, like for example, I wouldn't call anyone, the you know, Jesus said, don't call anyone father because there's only one father, your father in heaven, you know. So am I going to call a priest father? You know, I mean, just little things like that, yeah, yeah. you know. And then big things about, so I've met a lot of people who I believe are very strong Christians who have faith in Jesus despite, you know, uh, their Catholic mm -hmm. upbringing and background. And, uh, and then, I'll, you know, it's still, it's a personal relationship with, with God. So I've met a lot of people who have a really strong Bible background who just don't put it into practice. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't live it out. So they're like hypocrites, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it works both ways. You know, yeah, it doesn't, absolutely. doesn't mean you're, you are or you're not a Christian if you're Protestant or Catholic. It's still a personal relationship that you have with God. It's just, um, I look at the Bible as God's truth, and that's my standard of reference, you know, so. If you may, if mm -hmm. I may, I'm just curious. Do you believe that, like you say, like a personal relationship, obviously, with God, do you believe that one must go to church? I think um, if we want to be obedient to God, uh, and obedient actually to the Bible, it says that we should. Okay. Don't, don't forsake the gathering together of the brethren. Now, what does church look like? You know, Catholics would say it has to be, you know, it has to have, I think, all the sacraments yep. in it. Protestants, like the church I go to, we only celebrate, um, we call it communion, mm -hmm. uh, like once a month, you know. Not every time we meet, you know. I think maybe some Catholic churches would say that's wrong, you know. Yeah. So, um, when when I'm, the, the gathering of the brethren, well, if I'm meeting in a, small group Bible study, I feel, I'm not going to say that that's my church service, but, you know, I'm, I'm gathering with the church, you know, yeah. the church is yeah. people, so, Absolutely. it doesn't have to be a, a build, public building, either. So. I, I say that because I think that's where, like, my mom kind of veered into uh, as I got older, is uh, she was, every Sunday went, and then had her own business, I think once I got to, like, college, yeah. she, um, she said, you know, I, I, I have my faith, this is what I believe in. I don't, I don't feel I need to go to church to yeah. to show that. Yeah. And that's kind of her stance since then, and I, I, I appreciate that yeah. for myself, personally. I, I find, I think in the, the same place where it says don't neglect meeting together, mm -hmm. pretty sure it's the same book in the Bible. It talks about like people drifting from their faith. And so... Going to church doesn't make us a Christian, but it can help us keep from drifting. So yeah, we, makes sense. Yeah, so, and um, like even, you know, it, it's kind of like we, we teach each other, we learn from others, you know, like, um, I'll even, you know, like, I don't know if you've seen videos of people like raising their hands when they're worshiping. Well, mm -hmm. that's not my natural tendency to want to do that. Mm -hmm be, you know, kind of like uh, real expressive about my faith, but at the same time, when I'm in a church where people are doing that, I look around and because my mind might be on some business I have that week or something, mm -hmm. and then I look around and I, and I think, oh, that's right, we're here to worship, you know, mm -hmm. or uh, from a Catholic perspective, I remember driving down the road in a fire truck coming by, and, uh, and then I looked at people in the, on the sidewalk on the, on the, you know, that were seeing this fire truck, and they were crossing themselves, right? Yep. And I, I thought, say that, yep. why don't I be praying? You know, like, this is an emergency. Pray for the first responders and pray for whoever they're going to see. You know, I should be praying. So I think we're, we benefit. We definitely benefit from being around other faithful people. You yeah, know? yeah. And so I kind of look at it like what comes to mind is like, like the gym. Um, like, I, I know people where... You know, I'm fit. I stay fit, but I'm more involved when I go to a gym. And yeah. The, um, the oh, it's so easy to just sit there and. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And then you look around. Oh, they're working hard. Oh, that's right. I need to be. You exactly. Know? Yeah. 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 So I, I think it's helpful. It's very helpful. Yeah. And it's, Agreed. So God. God. The, the Bible says to do that for a reason. You know? Yeah. Makes sense. So it's a good question, though. Good. Yeah. Cool.
So I'm gonna turn this off because I gotta get going. Yeah, uh, same. Likewise, yeah. yeah. She probably just got done. All right. She'll be calling in a minute. <laughs> what? So what is she?